Hey guys, what is up? First of all, I just wanted to say how much I missed seeing all of you last week. And of course, I also missed seeing Scream Queens. But honestly, does it not feel like seven months since we last talked? Because that's what it feels like to me. So if you are in the room, just go ahead and type a hello so I can give you a shout out. But so far, I know that Savannah's here. I think Dren was planning on being here. So I don't know if Dren's here now or not, hopefully. Um, Mark is here. And there's probably others of you here who just haven't said hello yet. So we had an interesting episode, I thought, last night because it was a little bit different from some of the others just because we had a main focus on a character who we met for the first time. And we kind of learned a little more about the Dean, but I don't think the information we learned is going to help us about her. I don't think that's really going to help us figure out who the Red Devil is because I definitely don't think she is one of the killers. I think they kind of want us to think that because we know now that she is capable of murder and has committed murder before, but I just find that just all too easy. But I'm curious to see what you guys think about it and if you have any new theories. There are a couple of main points that I definitely want to talk about, but hi, Carrie. Thanks for being here. Um, but I just wanted to see what you guys think currently or what you thought about last night's episode. And you can start typing those comments. But I guess the biggest thing I think that happened, hi, Tony. The biggest thing I think that happened in last night's episode was something that hadn't happened in any episode before this one. And that was the fact that Grace was called out for the first time as being an RD suspect. And she had been pretty much my main suspect. And I said, like, I just don't feel like they're going to call her out because I feel like she is behind this. So Chanel number one is just for sure that Zayday and Grace are the Red Devils. So honestly, I just have to say that this show is amazing because really and truly it is super hard to figure out who the Red Devils are because I feel like they mess with our minds every single week. Okay, I'm going to read some of the comments now. Tony said not his favorite episode read somewhere. It was a filler episode. Also wanted to see what you guys thought about that. I was bored quite a bit. I hate to tell you that, but I was. We were missing some of the people who I feel like really make this show funny, like Denise and Zayday. They weren't in the episode at all. And I don't understand why we got this whole story about Feather. Um, I don't know if that is going to be important at some point. But you have to remember that Gigi was the one who told Grace to go after Feather. So I feel like there has to be some reason that we got her story and we spent an episode on her, basically. Um, Tony says, feel like the show is going to be like the movie Now You See Me. I think I've seen that, but can you refresh me and why you think that? Because I can't remember. Hey, Trey, thank you for being here. I think we're doing great. Um, Daniel's very scared about the Dean's future. Why do you think she's going to be murdered? Um, yeah, I could see that happening. Carrie says, this has to be my least favorite episode. Love them all, but this one took me back to the PLL days with filler episodes. Yes, and I think I've told you guys before, like, I have a class on Tuesday night, so I get back late. I don't, like, I have to, you know, like, this is boring, but I have to eat and stuff, so I don't get to watch Scream Queens live. So I watched it kind of late last night because I DVR it, and I was literally almost falling asleep, and I was looking at the DVR time and I was like, is this almost over? That's bad because I have never done that with a Scream Queens episode at all. And I felt bad about it and I was gonna feel really bad if you guys loved it. And I was gonna, I was like, I'll just try to keep the negative on the download because I don't want people to hate me if you guys loved it. But yeah, I thought it was really boring. Uh, Daniel's thinking this was supposed to be like a bridge episode. Savannah's saying maybe Denise is one of the Red Devils. Yeah, I could see that. She's always trying to throw blame on Zayday. And when people are always throwing blame on someone else, a lot of times they're trying to cover for themselves. Carrie says, Feather is the Sarah Harvey of Pretty Little Liars. What a wonderful analogy. Hopefully all of you have seen PLL. But yes, she even looks like her. I was very bored with her. Very, very bored. I'm hoping that there is a reason that we met her and spent an episode on her. Or I'm just hoping she goes away and we like never see her again. Um, Dren said, she's called out also on the promo of 1-8 in an interview of the actors, the actresses who plays Grace stress out the fact that she thought she was the killer. But at this point, what do you guys think? Do you have any convincing theories of who the two Red Devils could be? Um, I would have mentioned something else that really stood out to me. And maybe it's because I've watched so many Ryan Murphy shows and I kind of know how he operates. So when they were in that mental institution, 
And if any of you watch American Horror Story, I swear to you, that was the very same mental institution or whatever place they were using as they used in season two when they had a mental institution in American Horror Story. It's the same place, I swear. You know, which wouldn't be a surprise because the same people. Um, what's his name? Ryan Murphy. Anyway, so like the woman who was painting people, um, they mentioned her a couple of times and then she painted a portrait of Grace and Pete. She kept saying, I paint them all. I paint them all. Okay. That seems insignificant, but then I was wondering if maybe she has paintings of our Red Devils or something, if she's going to come back into play. Why did they like highlight her? Something's up with that. Trey thought it was kind of boring last night. It had its moments, but overall, yeah. I mean, we had the whole Ariana Grande stuff, which I thought was pretty boring. There was just a few things that I felt were of interest. And there's one other thing we need to talk about. Um, Leah feels like Pete is the Red Devil after watching the episode. Could be. And in a lot of movies and shows, the people who were trying to find the bad guys are actually the bad guys. Maybe one of them or maybe both of them are. There are so many people here talking. I really appreciate that. Uh, if I miss your comment, just comment again because I know I probably missed some stuff. Uh, Tony says feather stuff was boring and really creepy with the old guy. I so agree. I don't know if they were just trying to make us be like, oh my gosh, Dean, the Dean is a killer. So she's probably the red devil. I don't know. I mean, I feel like there has to be a point to that episode, but I'm not really sure. So Mark says there's definitely a reason why we met feather. That's what I think too. If you watch the promo for the next episode, you'll see that Grace and Pete visit her. Not going to spoil, but it's clear they find out stuff. So is this the, okay, the promo? Because they showed something last night right after the show, which seemed to show bits and pieces from the rest of the season, which we have five weeks left, which is, I mean, I think that's good because it's been a long first season. Um, or did you find like a different promo online that I don't know about? Because maybe Grace, or my Grace, maybe Feather was in that promo, but I was so tired at that point, I totally missed it. Um, Savannah says maybe the RDs are Chanel 5 and Boone because Chanel dated those two guys in the Dickie Dollar Scholars. I really think that Boone is involved. I mean, well, we know he's pretty much involved, but especially after last week's episode when he, um, was like basically playing golf with that Dickie Dollar Scholar who he killed or who someone killed and he, you know, like hit his head, you know, I mean, because he's a golfer. So that feels, feels like that might make sense. Tony says, I uh, feel like Chanel number three might be dead next. I could definitely see that happening. Um, it did look like some more people are going to die because we didn't have any of that except for the Dean's ex-husband. No one cares about him. So it would be interesting to see more people die that we know. Come on. This is what the show is about. Um, Carrie bets that Red Devil would have to be Chanel 5 and Earl, Earl Gray, who was one of the Dickie Dollar Scholars. Jordan says, does anyone know if they finished filming the is finale? Um, I, I don't know. I follow a lot of these people on social media, a lot of the actors and actresses, but I can't remember if they have said anything about their still filming or not. Tony is right here. The pacing is starting to feel slow, at least in comparison to How to Get Away with Murder, which is the other show I'm covering this season. Um, if you don't watch that, you really are missing out because there is never, this is the second season of that show, and I won't spend forever talking about this, but there's never been an episode of that show where I felt cheated or let down or bored or sleepy. It's excellent. Gotta say. But anyway, so please watch that if you haven't. Not because I love it, just because it's an excellent show. And it's a mega mystery, and it's probably going to be harder to figure out than this. But anyway, the other huge thing that no one has mentioned is the very beginning. So Gigi was on the phone with someone. She's like, first of all, she said, you're someone who I used to love. Okay, I'm thinking, is this boyfriend, ex-boyfriend, ex-girlfriend, ex, or not ex, but family member, friend? Then this person, she's really mad at them because she wants them to take care of a he who has screwed up. Who was she talking to? You know that this person on the other end of the phone is someone in the cast, okay? That is probably, to me, the biggest moment of last night's episode, besides the fact of Grace getting called out. I think that's the biggest mystery of last night's episode. So, Jennifer, hey, thanks for being here tonight. So, Laura says the promo for next week made me think that Grace is bathtub baby. We've all pretty much thought that before, or at least I know I have. And then the age didn't ma match up, and I think that threw some of you, but I still feel like either like her dad is in on it or they don't want her to know her real age or something. Um, 
So Daniel says, according to social media, the girl who plays Chanel number three is still recording episodes. Okay, that's interesting. Trey says, at least Kiki Palmer has still been Instagramming from time to time from the set. Okay. I actually don't follow her. I need to follow her. So you're right, though, because I've seen Emma posting stuff. And I saw the Chad Radwell guy, and I can't think of his name right now because I follow him on Instagram. Uh, yeah, he keeps posting stuff. So they're still filming this, probably. Tony says, feels like she was talking to Grace because next scene she's shopping with her. Yeah. Hmm. Possibly. But she, I think the phrase where she's like, you're someone who I used to love. I don't know. What would she have used? To, could she have used to have used to have loved Grace? I don't know. So Dren says it might be the bathtub baby who she might have raised. Oh, there you go. That's smart. Okay, I kept thinking it was like a boyfriend, a girlfriend. It could be her daughter, right? Because we think we think it's a girl. Do we think it's a girl? Now I can't even remember. What is wrong with me? It's a girl, right? The bathtub baby? Right, okay. So Carrie says they're still filming the finale right now. The actors and actresses were only given a piece of the finale script, which is typical in these types of mystery shows. So the large majority of actors and actresses don't know who our devil or red devil is. Jennifer's asking, what did she miss? Um, basically, we have just been trying to figure out, as always, who our red devils could be. Talking about who was Gigi talking to on the phone in the beginning, who she said she used to love. She sounded very, very angry with that person. And trying to figure out why Feather was even introduced to us. And if there's more to her story, which there probably is. What else did we talk about? Um... The fact that Grace was called out for the very first time by Chanel number one as a suspect. So Leah says, thinking that Gigi was maybe talking to Basta Baby on the phone. Exactly. That's what Dren was saying. And I think that is a very good idea that I didn't think about. So Mark says, there are so many set leaks right now because they're filming the finale. There's even one character spotted with bruises. You can easily tell who's going to die. Really? Spoilers and bad security. Okay. I don't want to know. So let's don't talk about it. But... Let's don't. And there was a whole fiasco with PLL where someone supposedly leaked the finale and then that wasn't even real. And who knows? So let's just let's just keep it down on the down low. I don't want to know these spoilers because then it's like it sucks because I want to try to figure it out. So Tony says, Emma, Leah, and Kiki always seen doing promos. Okay. Savannah says maybe she was talking to Chad on the phone. They were probably together since Chad has been with everyone. I like that. I like that a lot, Savannah. Didn't think about that. Like I've said before, I think that Chad is probably not super stupid as he always, always acts. I don't know. So I could see him being part, you know, someone that she, and I could see the way that she was, like the way she was talking, I don't see her talking to Grace that way, possibly, but it just seemed like when she was shopping with Grace, she seemed like really fake and trying to put on like a show like she was a nice person. So I don't feel like she would need to act like that in front of Grace if it was Grace if she had just been talking to on the phone. Just think about that for a little bit. Trey hates that they're just throwing Gigi in our face. Still seems too fishy to me. Also hate that because I think the actress was doing such a, a really good job of playing an innocent person. Like she wasn't overly over the top, you know, sweet and innocent. So she was believable. And the fact that they let us know what last week that she's, evil kind of sucks because they let us know when we had six episodes left and that's really early. I think the reveal should have come like, I don't know, like near the end, like three episodes, you know, until the finale. But like you said, Trey, there may be some trickery in all of that. They may be trying to trick us with her. Okay. So Tara is here. Hey, Tara is watching. I'm sorry that you're sick with the cold. I feel like I have something going on right now too, because my throat really, really hurts, and I should have brought a water over here, and I didn't. But I'm struggling a little bit, but I hope you feel better soon, Tara. So Dren says, didn't know there were so many spoilers about Scream Queen's finale. Don't want to know. Yeah, please, guys, do not post them in the comments because I'll accidentally read them, and other people will read them. And, we, you know, sometimes we don't, we don't even know if that's true, but we don't want to know. Most of us don't. Um, Gigi says, so, or Jennifer says, so is Gigi the actual murderer or the mastermind? So I've always thought she was the mastermind one of them, if not the only one. But then she made that statement on the phone. She was like, we're murderers. So I don't know. I still feel like she bosses everyone around and people do what she says. 
I don't think she's been murdering people, but I don't know. And that's what's killing me about this show. And it's, it's not killing me in a bad way. It's in a good way because I really, I think they've made it ultra impossible to figure out who, who anyone is for sure. I mean, what do you guys think? I think they have. So Daniel says the way she talked, it seems like it was a boy. I felt that way too. Gigi seemed like she was talking to some guy that she could basically control and push around. But, you know, that might be a little bit too obvious. And for all we know, like she's supposedly dating Grace's husband. She could be like a lesbian. We don't know. This could be an ex-girlfriend on the phone. We don't want to take anything at surface value here. So... Savannah thinks that it might be the candle vlogger, Jennifer, because there's been candles at each killing site. Yeah, and a lot of people have been saying that in the comments of my videos and in the live chats. She wasn't even in the episode last night, so I don't know. That doesn't mean anything, but that would be sort of shocking. And you're right, there's been candles at the killing site, so I don't know. I think one of those candles was actually by the bathtub of Feather, too, when she was... Wasn't, wasn't she like, there's like a scene of Feather in the bathtub, right? And I think there was one of those candles there, and that probably, mean, probably means nothing. But anyway, um, Tara says the dinosaur part was funny, that there being no dinosaurs in hell and that Jesus stole all the dinosaurs. That was funny. I did laugh at that. Tony says candle blogger might be the baby since last week she talked about her disability. If it was due to the girl being a teen, not knowing she was pregnant and being in a sorority was probably drinking. Yeah, I could def definitely see that. So that's kind of a new twist on it. Maybe she is the baby. Um, also, something I just thought about that Gigi said last night. She kept saying, we're in this for revenge. Um, so Gigi, I guess we have to assume she was one of those sorority sisters from episode one. Like she was one of the people who watched all this happen. And I guess she raised the bathtub baby. I don't know why she's super, super angry. What are your thoughts on that? Besides the obvious. So Mark has um, switched from Grace to Pete now. Ryan said the killer is very clear in the pilot. And Pete was basically behind being suspected by every character. He was super shady. Okay. The only thing that has always bugged me about Pete is that he acts so weird. And he'll, like, give little weird looks at the camera. And we saw him have the Red Devil costume, like, in his closet. It was that the first episode? I mean, it was really early on. And I feel like that would almost be boring if he ends up being the Red Devil. But hey, I mean, I want to be shocked. I don't want it to be that obvious. But I see what you're saying as well. Jen says maybe Gigi is not controlling the Red Devil. She's controlling some other killer. And the Red Devil is someone else. And he is getting in the way of Gigi and the killer. Well, that could be possible. That would be an interesting twist. I mean, I don't know. I'm just hoping there is a big twist. And there's like... Like, it's just stuff that we can never predict will happen. Like, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, Leah says, don't think that Grace's dad is involved at all now because he walked in when Gigi was on the phone and she didn't want him to know about the phone call. Yeah, I mean, the more I think about him, the less I suspect him lately. Or they could just be trying to totally trick us with him. I don't know. So, Dren says, the Gigi, that Gigi is telling to the person on the phone, you have to kill him. Yeah, she said he which was important, but we also think there's more than one red devil. So we at least know one's a guy. At least we have that information. Daniel says as well in the promo of the show, they show us that the Dean tells Grace the name of the girl who died in the bathtub. Where did you guys see this promo? Was it on YouTube? Because I swear I saw something different after the show last night on Fox because I saw like this promo for the rest of the season or something. So I don't know what the heck happened there. Carrie says Red Devil probably has a link to the bathtub baby night. And if Gigi is part of that team, then she is that link. She was the nice girl taking care of the baby, raised her, and hated all the others. Okay, so that totally makes sense. She's just really resentful because no one wanted to help. And they, like, let the mother die. Maybe she was good friends with the mother. Um, you know, that makes sense. So I can see that. But she seems a little mentally crazy. I mean, like, she seems a little disturbed. Because I can see being upset and, and wanting, you know, bad things to happen, I guess, to those people. But she seems crazy. Like, the way she was chopping the vegetables and stuff, I mean, I don't know. Um, you don't think, though. So, Dren says, uh, doesn't think we'll be surprised they're pointing out everyone. Which I thought, like, a few episodes ago, I thought that they may do that. Because by them doing that, it makes it so hard for anyone to figure out 
who are really the bad guys or the bad girls. But still, I still think we could be a little surprised because, yes, they've called everyone out, but there are some people who I'm not like, I, I don't get major vibes, like major Red Devil vibes from, but I don't know. Let, let me ask you guys this. Who do you think would be super shocking if you found out they were Red Devil? Let's just, let's just talk about that. So in the promo, the Dean tells Grace the name of the bathtub baby. Well, I need to find this promo because I definitely didn't see that one. Carrie says, girls who left her to bleed out with the baby, but why is Gigi attacking the year this year of college students? I don't know. And they were playing 80s music again. And if you've watched me in these live shows before, I don't understand why they're always playing 80s music. And the only connection I can find to that is Denise. So I don't know. There has to be something about that. Um, so Carrie says, the link is Chanel number five. She is a legacy. Chanel number five's mother was there. Okay. So that makes a lot of sense. That really does. Thank you for clearing that up. I like that. Savannah says, think Gigi might have been talking to Denise on the phone because a couple episodes ago, it said that KKT didn't let, didn't let Denise in because she was black, basically. Um, maybe. I don't know. I wish we kind of knew who she was talking to. That would be interesting to me. And I just wonder, like, are they going to make Boone one of the Red Devils and then... You know, maybe that was the he that she was talking about because we, they pretty much told us that Boone is involved. Or are they going to shock us and like say he's just kind of a helper and have two different Red Devils? But I think we can pretty much safely assume that there are two Red Devils at this point. We don't have to think that there's just one because they've pretty much said it. Um, I would still think it. Would, I think it would be really cool if Chad ended up being a Red Devil and ended up being smart. Like to me, that would be kind of shocking and exciting to me. So Tara says, maybe the woman who was in the asylum who was painting people had been in there for 30 years. Maybe she's one of the girls from 95 that Mandy talked about who was in the asylum. Uh, yeah, that would be really cool. I feel like she's more important than just a crazy person who paints. I really do. I like that. So Jennifer says, uh, I think I will be shocked. She thinks she'll be shocked if they did a pretty little liar's twist, but they're not really dead, but don't want them to. Um. That would really bug me. They've already kind of done that with Boone. And some people thought that Ariana was actually alive. But I think after last night, we've pretty much confirmed that she's dead. But, like, I just think it would be kind of stupid, especially since they had all their bodies in that house at one point, the haunted house. Like, if they're like, oh, my gosh, all these people were just playing dead. That's kind of dumb. I don't know. Um, hi, Jake. Yes, thank you for responding to my comment about Chanel number three in the bathtub, of course. And honestly, on all my videos, I try to respond to everyone. And if I don't respond to you, then you know it's because there's something up with YouTube because I seriously go through those every day because some people have their settings and they don't even realize it where I can't respond. It, there's not even a, a way for me to do it. So if I don't respond to you and you're on Twitter, and my links are down below, I'm Kelly underscore TV on Twitter, just follow me there and ask the same question. I'm never trying to ignore any of you. So um, if I don't respond, that is why. So Dren says it would be shocking if CC would be the Red Devil. No, no more CC. Please no. Yes, it would be shocking, and I will probably really throw my TV out the window this time because I wanted to do it on Pretty Little Wires, and that would be like the final straw. Jake thinks that Grace could be the Red Devil. She's too innocent. I've thought that all along. But now that she's being like point blank called out, I'm not so sure, but we'll see. So Leah says, why didn't they answer how they found Chanel number two's body? I don't know. That was definitely strange. I don't know. Daniel says, I really need to see the promo. It shows a lot of things. Okay, I will look for it here on YouTube as soon as this show is over. Um, Daniel says, for example, the lady had a painting and it was supposed to be Gigi. Are you serious? So I was right about that and I didn't even know? Oh my gosh, I knew she was important. Savannah says, will they have more characters come on Scream Queens, lift up the cast on Google and have more people actually in the cast? Uh, for this season, really? I feel like I did the same thing like like maybe before the first episode started just to see like who's going to be on the show. And you're right. I feel like there's people who we've never seen yet. That is also something Ryan Murphy does like all the time. If anyone here watches American Horror Story, and to be honest, I'm not watching it this season, um, there's all kinds of people listed in the cast when it first starts, and you don't see some of them until like six or seven episodes in because they may have a very small part or they just may be more important near the end. So you guys um, could be completely right. There are maybe more people. Who are they actually? Are they really famous people? Because I kind of remember that and now I've forgotten. Yeah, Tony, the body was in the Halloween House of Ariana. 
So, and I guess we pretty much saw her dead, right? Didn't we see her tweeting like one last tweet before she died and all that stuff in her room? I think so. Um, so if you're new here, I just want to remind you that it would be super cool if you subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, because um, in addition to doing these live Scream Queen chats, I also have a review and theory video usually every Thursday, so I'm going to shoot that after this, and I'll put that up tomorrow for this week's episode. So, so, so subscribe so you don't miss any of that, and then my social media links are down below, so please follow me and do all those things on that. I would appreciate it. Twitter is also the very best way to keep in touch with me because that's when I post, when live shows are coming, when videos are posted, and you can just you know keep up with what I'm doing there. Um, I agree with you, Jake. My favorite season of American Horror Story was also Coven, although the very first season was really, really good um, as well. So it's kind of a toss-up, but I liked Coven, I guess, because it had like a younger cast, and I really do like Emma Roberts, and I thought she was great in that. So Mark says, definitely think the bathtub mother had two babies, and oh, that's interesting, and one was Chanel number five. Like, she could have had twins, right? Yeah. It explains why the Red Devil didn't kill her in episode six when he, she killed Dodger, Artie had her cornered and did nothing, and that was really weird, and I mentioned that. Mark, I really like how you're thinking there. That's super interesting. There could be a boy and a girl, and I think that's amazing. I love that. Uh, Dren says no one's paying attention to Hester. She might be involved. Exactly. They've kind of, like, thrown shade at her before, but then they've, you know, backed off. So she's super creepy, and she loves death and stuff, so I could see that as well. Carrie says, the thing about this week's episode is that's not very relevant. We didn't lose any characters because we gained and lost them from the same episode. Worry this may be a pattern. Um, I wouldn't get too worried just because with only five episodes left, and you have to remember that this doesn't carry over to another season, so this storyline will be over. When, this, when it's over, it's over. So they really don't have the room to keep doing filler episodes. It's not like Pretty Little Liars where you can drag things out for 500 episodes. So I do think possibly, like, there could possibly be one more slow one, but no more than that. And I'm hoping we don't have any more slow ones at all. Um, thank you, Tony, for asking people to, to subscribe. I appreciate that. Jake says uh, he liked Murder House as well, second favorite season. I um, really didn't like the Fun House one. I couldn't get into that. I think that was last season. And this season, I can't get into it. But I haven't tried super hard, but I don't know. I didn't really like the first episode. But Murder House was really, really good. Of course, that was what got me kind of hooked on the show for a while. So, yes. Um, so we just have a few minutes left. So you have, like, three minutes to get in any last-minute theories or questions or comments. And um, if you joined late, remember this video shows up in just a few minutes on my channel. And you can make your comments there. Or if you think of something later, you can make your comments and then I will go back later tonight and respond to all of you guys. Um, Jake feels like Chanel number three will die and Earl Grey is the killer. Yeah, a lot of you think Earl Grey is uh, suspicious, which he could be. I've never heard anyone on the show, like, single him out, too, so that is interesting. Leah really hopes they don't bring back any dead characters just because she feels like that is so typical for these kinds of shows. I really hope not. Like I said, they already did that once with Boone, so if they do it more, it's just going to get stupid and ridiculous okay carrie says on imdb it says ariana grande is in five episodes of scream queens am i missing something um well that's interesting but she may there's still you know five episodes to go so she may come back as a ghost of course she was in last night's she was also in the one with the halloween house as a body so yeah i think that's kind of what i think that could be true Dren also thinks an American Horror Tour Story Hotel is different from the others in every way. It definitely is. I don't know why I just couldn't get into it, but some people love it, so maybe it's my fault for not giving it more of a chance. Mark thinks that Earl will die next week. All the girls are seen screaming in the promo for next week, so the next death should be at least someone on the main cast. They need to start making it interesting. They really need to start killing people who are kind of important in the cast. I agree. Like They need to kill off like Kiki Palmer or Hester or somebody more important. Um, Daniel wants to know if all seasons are going to be on a college campus. I'm not sure. I haven't read what they're going to do with this. If anybody knows, you can post down below. Um, Savannah loves these live chats. Well, thank you for being here, Savannah. I love talking to you guys. It's so much fun. Tara thinks Jennifer is about the baby, which could totally be possible. Um, Daniel thinks change the location, maybe change the location a bit. Um, they may. Usually what he does, Ryan Murphy, because he does American Horror Story, 
Um, the same way every season is different, and it's always in a different city. So I don't even know what city they're. What city are they in for Scream Queens? Do you guys know? Uh, thank you, Jake. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to have you watching. That makes me happy. Um, but that's a good question. Like, what city is Scream Queens in? Because, like, with American Horror Story, we always know like what where it's taking place. They did kill Sam, but Sam was kind of a smaller character too. Mark says each season is set somewhere different. Ryan has already pitched an idea to Fox for season two. Um, my hair is really itching my face. I apologize. But, yeah, uh, I definitely think it'll be back next season. I don't think we have to worry about that. Jennifer's the bathtub baby. See, now we know. Jennifer Claire is the bathtub baby. So thank you for letting us know. And now we can, if you just tell us who the Red Devils are, we can stop having these live chats. Dren thinks it's too early. It's early to be sure about someone being the RD. A little bit, but since we only have five episodes left, we should be able to start trying to put some pieces together after the next couple of episodes. Okay, very good. Tony, that's a great point. They did go to Bel Air, so they're probably in L.A. And if you remember, if you watched American Horror Story, the very first season also took place in L.A. Um, very good point. Yeah, they went there to see Chanel's parents, Chanel number two. Peter is here. Thanks for joining us, Peter. We'd love to see Chanel being the Red Devil, Chanel number one, I assume. She's hilarious and over the top, but don't think it will happen, especially since she has been pretty suspicious all season long. I would kind of like that, too, though. I agree with you. And I'm going to read one more comment, and then we've got to go. But Carrie says, Ryan Murphy says if the show gets a second season, it will be somewhere completely different. I apologize. A new killer of a, dark, a barking dog. And only four to three cast members will be alive at the end of season one. I did hear that. Only a few people are going to survive this season. I'm sorry. I think that's my my cue to go. Um, Trey says the last two episodes will air December 8th with the two-hour two hour finale. That is awesome. That is really awesome. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. I'm sorry that my dog is freaking out again. I don't know what it is. He just doesn't like Scream Queens, apparently. But um, I really appreciate you guys being here. I love you guys. And please watch my video tomorrow, and then this video will be up in just a few minutes. So have a good night. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.